He also had one computer, but it was a big radar flash. And it's then that I see that once the flash happens, the Mercedes goes left, right, left. Initially, Monsieur Leviste was dismissed by the French police, but subsequently has been called in again by the judge to give his account of the events. Many other witnesses have also described the motorbike and some the very bright flash. Meanwhile, early that morning, amid all the frantic activity back at the Alma Tunnel, the fate of the most famous woman in the world lay in the hands of French emergency workers. According to media reports, Diana was semi-conscious but had signs of internal bleeding low blood pressure and difficulty breathing. Yet, for some unexplained reason, it took one hour and 43 minutes to deliver Diana to a hospital that was only 3.8 miles away. Why? Things are slightly different in France there in the United Kingdom, but it is rather strange that she was treated for so long at the roadside, as it were, uh, because really, if someone is that seriously ill, the sooner they got, they're, they're, they're taken to a center of excellence, a casualty department with intensive care, the better. And the French authorities have also offered no explanation as to why the ambulance took 15 minutes to reach the crash scene on a quiet night. It is strange. I would have expected the ambulance to be there within five minutes. That's what you would normally expect if you had a crash in Oxford Street. There has also been no explanation as to why the ambulance stopped for 10 minutes when they were just 800 metres from the hospital. It's a very, very odd thing to do. No ambulance would ever do that in this country, and I believe that no ambulance anywhere in the world would ever do that unless there was a conspiracy. And the ambulance drove past several other hospitals that were closer to the crash site on its way to the Petite Salpetriere. Even Diana's medical treatment at the scene has become the subject of some controversy. According to the doctor who treated her at the scene, she had a ruptured pulmonary artery. Again, how was he to know that she had ruptured one of the main vessels in her body, which is inside her body, unless she was so badly injured that it would be obvious to see, if so, she would be dead already. Um, I really don't know, but the whole thing, from the medical point of view, sounds very, very strange. Time was of the essence, but there were tremendous delays. Is it possible that Diana could have lived had she been taken to hospital more quickly? No one knows, and the French authorities refused to cooperate by releasing Diana's medical records. With the paparazzi in full cry, Diana and Dodi headed off for their third and final holiday aboard the al fayed yacht on July the 21st, 1997. Michael Cole, a former BBC royal correspondent, and Mohammed al fayed's former head of communications, tells the story of the events that the al fayed team believes threw the security forces into a frenzy of activity. They were on their last holiday together on Jonicol. The boat put into Monte Carlo and they went ashore. It was in the evening and they went to a shop of the company Reposi and they looked at two rings. She saw one on the window and she, she wanted this. So we, we prepare uh, the delivery uh, I adapt a lot of, of our models uh, on, on the character of the client. With Princess Diana was not so difficult. It was so a ring that she could have worn all the time? Yes, of course. A diamond ring called Tell Me Yes, a wealthy Egyptian son of a billionaire critic of the royal family, a Muslim to boot, the mother of the future king, the combination sent shivers down the royal spines. I just thought it was hilarious. Hilarious, the idea of them all sitting there, various castles and palaces, having to accept the fact that, you know, one day Diana might marry Dodi Fayet. Just too amusing for words and great payback. But if you ask me if it was deliberate, I think definitely not. But she I just didn't care about their reaction. In a way, she, that showed a new just, confidence. I was just told she was just in love with him, just fell madly in love with this guy. I think Diana was killed, but I don't think the people of this country want to hear it. And those that killed her rely on that. She was in a knockdown, drag out brawl with the House of Windsor, directly challenging 
their right to continue to remain on the British throne. This was high politics, not low soap opera. So from the standpoint of the broader strategic question of motive, uh, there's certainly very much motive on the part of the Windsors to want her out of the way, to clear up this succession question. If we don't have a black ambassador, if we don't have a black minister or a Muslim minister or a tanned minister in this country, do you think we will have a stepfather of the future king of this country? Ironically, on the day of the crash, the Sunday Mirror published an article describing Prince Philip's views on the Diana Dodi Al Fayed relationship. An unnamed friend of the royals reported to the Sunday Mirror. Prince Philip has let rip several times recently about the Al Fayeds. He's been banging on about his contempt for Dodi as an undesirable stepfather to William and Harry. Diana has been told in no uncertain terms about the consequences should she continue the relationship with the Fayed boy. Options include possible exile, although that would be difficult. That the article actually appeared on the day of the crash makes its final sentence particularly ominous. But now the royal family may decide it is time to settle up. Four days after Christmas in the year 1170, four knights loyal to the then king Henry II murdered the Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas a Becket, in Canterbury Cathedral. They had been prompted to do so by the rash words of infuriated Henry II. Will no one rid me of this turbulent priest? Is Prince Philip a modern-day Henry II with MI6 playing the role of the murderer knights? <laughs>